Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. You know, I'm, I've got this golden rule. One of my golden rules regarding boxing is that I never judge a fighter historically uh, when he's still in the throes of his career. But occasionally a guy comes along and you just start to think in those historical terms. You know, is this guy one of the greatest ever? Is he the greatest ever from his country? Blah, blah, you know, all that sort of stuff. And so it is with um, Noya and Nui who I think is certainly one of my top three pound-for-pounders at the moment. I think he's a magnificent fighter. I love watching him. He's recently, very recently, only a day or two ago, unified uh, the bantamweight division for all four belts, WBO, WBC, WBA and, and IBF. He's got all of them. Uh, but he, he was taken 11 rounds by an extremely negative Paul Butler, and he caught up with him eventually, knocking him out. It's essentially a body punch. He knocked him two body punches, actually, that knocked him out. And he picked up the final piece of the jigsaw. But Anoue, I mean, his achievements are so striking and so so eye-catching that you've got to start asking, well, you could ask, is he one of the greatest bantamweight or... Yeah, yeah, all right, we'll go with it. Is he one of the greatest bantamweight fighters of all time? Well, well I'm not going to go down that path because, again, I don't really like thinking that far down the road when a guy is still fighting. And Anoue is still only 29. He's got plenty to give, and he's going to move up to Super Bantam, and Stephen Fulton and others are weight, and, you know, he might end up at Featherweight and so on. This guy started off at light flyweight. Um, but the one question I am intrigued by, and which I kind of can't get out of my mind, is, is he Japan's greatest fighter ever? Because pre, uh, prior to this, if you asked most people, prior to when Inoue came along, who's Japan's greatest fighter ever, they would say fight in Harada. And with good cause, because Harada won his titles, his, he won flyweight and bantamweight titles in the 1960s. I think 62 was when he won his flyweight title. I might have that wrong. Um, but, and he didn't hold that long. He won that. Uh, he won the title, the flyweight title against uh, Poe and Kimpech, and then lost it. I think these were these were old fifteen rounders, by the way, and there were no super flyweight, light fly, you know, light flyweight, super bad to There were none of those around. None of those divisions around. But he he won the fight on an. He won the title, the lightweight title, which was a WBA uh, flyweight title. He won that on an eleventh round KO against Poe and Kimpech, and then he lost it. Um, I think he won it in 62 and lost it in 63. He lost it on a majority decision, a 15-round majority decision. Now, he then went on a run. They didn't have a third fight, which was weird. I thought they would have done um, politics, maybe. I don't know. I don't know the story. Uh, but they were one and one. And I suspect, looking at, the, looking at his overall career, that um, Harada decided to go up to Bantamweight to try and win a second world title in the second division. Again, there was no super flyweight division then. So he went on a great long run and he ended up uh, fighting Ada Joffre for the bantamweight, uh, the WBA and the WBC bantamweight titles. And he beat him on a split decision in Nagoya in Japan. Uh, it's a 50. Again, these were 15 rounders. It was a split decision. He also won uh, a unanimous decision in a rematch, although there was uh, a fight between those between the, the first and the, and the second um, matches with uh, Jofra. He also fought Alan Rudkin in Japan, in Budokan, and outpointed him over 15 rounds. Then he beat Jofra again. And I think he made five defences of the title, of the bantamweight title, before uh, losing it to Lionel Rose. And that was a unanimous decision Again, in Japan, in Budokan. Again, a 15-rounder, because these were old 15-rounders. So you have to consider that, A, there were no... there were no the World title fights were 15 rounds, not 12. And, B, there were no uh, um, split weights. You know, like, um, there was no super fly, there was no um, super bantam. Was, you know, Harada actually tried to win the featherweight title, and he lost twice to Johnny Fra uh, Famishan of, of, uh, Japan, of Japan, of Australia, uh, first time he was outpointed over 15 rounds, unanimous decision. That was in Sydney. And then in the rematch, I think that I think that was in Japan. I can't remember whether it was Budokan or whatever, wherever it was, but it was in Japan. He got KO'd in the 14th round by uh, Famishon, and that was Harada's final fight. And uh, uh, Harada finished with 55 wins, 7 defeats, 
two of the defeats were inside the distance and he had 22 KOs in his wins. Now that is a very, very good record, you know, because of the quality of the opposition. I mean, Ada Joffre, for example, was a brilliant, brilliant champion. I mean, a really brilliant champion. And in fact, Joffre, if you look at his I mean, this guy was amazing, a Brazilian fighter. He, he's, he ended his career with 72 wins, 50 KOs. Two defeats, none by KO, two, two defeats. And who were the two defeats to? Fighting Arada. The only two, the only, Arada was the only guy who beat Joffre. And Joffre had four draws as well, but you know, whatever. Um, but that those those are so the quality of the opposition. You know, all right, he lost he lost to Lionel Rose, but Lionel Rose was a great fighter. You know, um, he fought good people, the best of his era, and he you know he usually came out on top. Right? Um, so a great fighter, no doubt about it, a Hall of Famer. Now a new way, a different era. Twelve rounds is the the. Um, Championship distance, um, had the opportunity to win belts in, like, he started off at Light Fly, then he won, uh, I think he, he won his first world title at Light Fly uh, in his sixth pro fight, which is, <laughs> by anyone's standards, is, is pretty amazing. It was against Adrian Hernandez and he stopped him in six rounds. And then um, he actually jumped over the flyweight division into the super flies. I don't know why he did that, maybe weight making issues. Um, and he, this was where I, I first noticed Anoue and started really paying attention was when he won his uh, WBO World Super Flyweight title against Omar Navarez because he smashed Navarez to bits in two rounds. And Navarez had just gone the distance. I think it was with Nanito Donaire. Navarez, to this day, has only ever been stopped once, and that was by Anoue. Um And, I mean, you know, that's an achievement to just smash right through a well-established champion who'd made many, many defences was 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 amazing, and then uh, Anoue went on this this run of defeats, knockout defeats, uh, knockout run of wins. Sorry, knockout knockout wins, um, and then he he's moved up to bantamweight to claim his third title against an absolutely hideously weight drained Jamie McDonald. That was for the WBA World Bantam title, and he took part in the um, that world, you know, that uh, Sauerland competition uh, that tournament the uh world what's it called the world boxing super series or something i can't remember what it's called but usek won it josh taylor won it and anui ended up winning it as well um and along the way he did uh, juan carlos payano in a round which was an amazing performance payano was a tough tough so-and-so and uh emmanuel rodriguez got done in two rounds and then at, in the final of that uh Bantamweight tournament. He had Nonito Donaire, who and they they produced a twelve round war in which Anoue suffered a broken eye socket and a broken jaw and still ground out a win against a brilliant Donaire. A fantastic, fantastic fight. Probably fight of the year, wasn't it? Maybe Taylor Taylor and uh, Rigolu. Maybe I don't know. Uh, Progre Taylor Progre. That was a good. That was a that was a final of that that of one of those tournaments as well. That of course was up at. Uh, Super lightweight. Um, and then following the tournament, he carried on, in a way, carried on beating people up and the, including a two round demolition where he just crushed Donaire in the rematch in two rounds, less than two rounds. It's shocking to see. He had him over in the first round, knocked him out in the second. And then more, most recently of all, of course, Butler, and he's a four, four belt champion. Now, whose resume is the greatest? Well, having. I mean, don't forget, Noya Inoue, Inoue has 24 wins, 21 knockouts and no defeats. OK, so, so far at the age of 29, that's his record. And he's beaten good men. I think the two wins over Donaire, even though Donaire was, was long in the tooth, were very, very good. Sometimes it's the manner in which you get your your work done. I mean, something like, you know, the Jane McDonald fight where McDonald looked like he's so gaunt. He looked totally weight drained. He looked like a concentration camp survivor um no surprise that, that he got bombed out in a round but some of the other contests especially um payano and um, emmanuel rodriguez the way they were dealt with that, that was impressive stuff really really impressive stuff um and i mean rodriguez at the time was rodriguez the ibf phantom champ i don't remember i think there was a that's where a new way got his second world title anyway i'm digressing who would you say is the greater Japanese fighter? 
again, I repeat, I'd rather see Inoue at the end of his career and then make a judgment. But let's put it this way. <clears throat> Although I have massive respect for fighting Harada, doing it in the old era, the 15 rounders, when there weren't so many belts, when there weren't so many divisions, I think he's a great fighter, genuine Hall of Famer. I just feel that by, when the dust settles and when Anoue's career is over, people will be calling him the greatest. The greatest Japanese fighter of all time. Because there's just something about the way he gets the, his work done most of the time. And the fact that in that first Donaire fight, he walked through a, you know, a broken jaw and a broken eye socket to grind out that victory and to actually late, late on to floor Donaire with a body punch. Donaire himself being a great fighter, I think that showed true greatness. And I think when he moves up to Super Bantam, as much as I like Stephen Fulton, I've got a feeling Donaire might make some waves in that Division 2. Uh, not Donaire. Inoue might make some waves in that Division 2 and, and actually uh, become a, a four-weight champ. Uh, against A legitimate four-weight champ against very good... If he could clean out a second division... That would be impressive, but that's that's a long way off. Of course, politics, you've got to make the fights and everything. Uh, so, yeah, fighting Harada, Noya Anue from very different eras, very different circumstances. A lot of belts nowadays, a lot of divisions nowadays. But I, as my grandfather used to say to me, there's no such thing as the good old days. You know, it's, <laughs> don't make the mistake of thinking that fighters are inferior today to the ones of old. Some are, some aren't, you know circumstances change but uh, fighting men remain and um, Noya Anue is a fighting man just as fighting Harada was so I don't know what do you think do you have any opinions on this if so leave them below um, thanks for watching the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new that would be great just hit the subscribe button cost you nothing takes a second Pew, job done like the video that helps us out as well and uh, again thanks for your time as always we will speak again soon Leave your thoughts below and bye for now.